10 years now. Um, I've been clinically diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, social anxiety disorder. Here I am talking in front of 20 people. Um, and I also have a chronic GI issue called SIBO, um, which has similar um, symptoms as like IBS type thing, but it's basically on a whole nother level. Um, went to see, I think, seven different doctors. I definitely got the most benefit from Dr. G. Marina, uh, working as a naturopath, but basically found out that, you know, once you start to see that there's four or five different medical conditions going on, there's probably something else going on and just addressing each individual symptom might not have the effects that you're looking for. So, um, you know, Ben and I both went to the University of Vermont, graduated in, in 2012 with business degrees, um, and got really passionate around CBD because it ended up being the thing that has kind of given me my quality of life back. I'm on crazy diets where I basically cannot eat about 150 different foods. Um, and this has been the best thing to kind of eliminate a lot of the symptoms and just get me back on track, uh, live my best life. Um, Ben, you want to tell a little bit about your story? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So yeah, Nate and I have been longtime friends at this point, over a decade. We met like the first week of our freshman year at uh, college, the University of Vermont. And um, we were actually living together in South Boston at the time that Nate was originally kind of putting together his very first business plan for, you know, a business in this space, in the cannabis space. Uh, this was maybe five years ago at this point. Um, he's always been interested in kind of the science and research of it all and looking deep into these individual compounds, CBD, and all these other ones that we'll be talking about in the discussion. But uh, yeah, like I said, we were living together at the time. Nate was telling me all about these terpenes and these other cannabis compounds. I don't know what the heck he was talking about back then. <laughs> um, but I inevitably just kind of ended up getting roped in to what he was doing and myself personally i've also you know struggled with a few things anxiety related depression you know a lot of things i think a lot of people can relate to um and i've been interested in cannabis myself as well for uh, a pretty long time so i personally experimented with cbd and found it really helpful for a lot of the stuff i was struggling with more so than other forms of cannabis as well and um I, I ended up just jumping on board with Nate to help him out and put together a business that really can use some of the research he's done and some of the stuff that's really helped him and helped me uh, and create products that can help other people as well. And products that are all natural, they're you know locally grown and processed here in Massachusetts. And ultimately they're, you know as far as we can go with the science, optimized for specific needs. Uh, which we'll get into later but um yeah yeah so it's been a really really great journey thus far better life has been an awesome early adopter of what we're doing and our products and uh that's kind of a little bit of our back back story and and how we started it all we're excited to kind of dive deeper into some of the specifics and yeah yeah so without further ado we are potter uh, as, as Ben said, everything that we use in our ingredients is grown right here in Massachusetts. So we have a 10 acre farm uh, in Westfield. We process all of our products in Southbridge, Massachusetts. Um, our business is based in Northampton. Um, and we've partnered with about 10 to 15 retail stores all throughout Massachusetts. And we love partnering with natural food stores like this because they really get it. A lot of them have naturopath uh, type connections and things like that. Um, so, you know, you're definitely supporting local where a lot of the other companies out there are from Colorado or Oregon or other stuff like that. So it's all local. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, I know a lot of you guys came to learn about CBD and we'll definitely talk a lot about CBD. Um, one of the big differences between our company and others is that, as Ben said, we really optimize for specific effects. So today what you'll learn about is that while CBD is an important ingredient in the product that you're looking for, and it's really important to make sure that the CBD that is marketed on the product is actually in it, there's also a whole bunch of other compounds that you want to keep in mind and make sure are in your product if you're using it for specific wellness needs. So we'll get into a lot of that kind of stuff. 
Um, I'm thinking the presentation will probably go for about 45 minutes. Um, if there's something that we're talking about and you're like, I don't think I can get through this presentation without knowing the answer to this right now, raise your hand. We're very happy to take questions as we go. We prefer if we waited to the end um, because I think there are going to be a lot of questions and a lot of specific things people want to talk about. We'll also be doing some uh, demos for you guys afterwards. So, you know, a lot of you guys tried the lotion. As you can see, we have uh, eight other products to try. So you guys can absolutely try um, basically any of our products up here if you're interested in them. And all of them are available for retail um, here at Better Life as well after. So introduction, what is CBD? So CBD is a therapeutic compound found in the cannabis sativa plant. And yes, this is the same exact plant that uh, is known as marijuana. It happens to just be a different genetic. Um, so one is bred for high CBD. It's also known as industrial hemp. It usually has less than 0.3% THC. So you don't feel that um, intoxicating effect that can happen from THC. Um, there are actually over 100 different uh, cannabinoids that are found in cannabis. And, um, you know, You've probably heard of THC. You might not have heard of CBG. Hopefully by the end of this, you guys have some information about why these other cannabinoids are almost just as important or even more important, depending on what specific wellness needs you're trying to address. Um, and then most people are, are really interested in CBD because unlike THC, which causes an intoxicating type effect, CBD uh, does not cause a lot of the paranoia and anxiety type effects that can come with THC type products. So you're really able to get a lot of the benefits of cannabis without feeling lethargic and not being able to go through through uh, about your day, basically. Um, so our goal today is to help you as a consumer uh, find the best product for your individual needs. And sorry, I'm trying to get out of your way. No, so that's you can okay. <laughs> Um, so definitely come up to us afterwards if you have individual questions and we can kind of help advise, um, what to be looking for. So probably seems that, you know, all of a sudden there's this great medicine available and you might think, you know, what came first, you know, humans or this plan and like, how did it all happen? Um, but definitely plants came first. Cannabis has been around longer than the human civilization. Um, and it's actually theorized that these cannabinoids that we're now very interested in were actually started um, as a, a mechanism within the plant to prevent um, UV radiation that would basically destroy the plant. So these cannabinoids are basically like a sunscreen for the plant so that it can, you know, uh, flourish and not be damaged by harmful UV rays. It's pretty interesting. Um, although cannabis medicines have been used since the 1700s, 1800s, into the 1900s, um, and they, you know, they definitely ran studies and found they work good for like stomach issues, like stopping vomiting, weird stuff like that. Um, the ECS, which is the endocannabinoid system, which we'll talk about in a second, wasn't actually discovered until 1992. Um, and I know 1992 seems like a while ago, but that's fairly recent for how long cannabis has been used as a natural medicine in society. Um, so very interesting. Um, Raphael McCollum was the one who discovered it. And basically he was studying the effects of THC and saw that THC ended up um, replicating uh, the effects of endocannabinoids within our system. And all of a sudden he started looking at this and figured out that there was the most complex uh, cell signaling system in the entire human body. So pretty interesting that we're just starting to find out about this stuff. And largely that's due to the prohibition and the inability to study this over, um, you know, due to loss and things like that. So what exactly is the endocannabinoid system? The endocannabinoid system are natural chemicals that are found uh, within the human body. Um, as I mentioned, it's the largest uh, cell receptor system, signaling system in the human body. Um, these, uh, these receptors are found throughout the brain, throughout the digestive system, throughout the immune system. They're actually found in every single organ located within the human body, which is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. wild. Um, what, what, 
basically the main um, mechanism or reason for this for this cellular system is to maintain homeostasis within the body. So what does homeostasis mean? It's basically like managing your mood, managing pain, managing inflammation, sleep patterns, really keeping your body in balance and feeling good um, is is the whole point of the endocannabinoid system. And there's a lot of other things that um, the endocannabinoid system will modulate. And you can see here, we have two main cannabinoid receptors, which we'll get into a little bit more detail in uh, the future. CB1 is the light blue dots, and you can see that most of them are actually located in your brain. But there is also other areas where they can be found. CB2 are generally found in the peripheral organs, so you're going to find a lot in like your GI tract, your stomach, um, in your immune system. So two main different receptors, and basically they're, they're just found in different parts of, of your body. I know this slide's a little bit busy, but I wanted to talk about the naturally occurring endocannabinoids that are found in your body. So there are two main types. Um, the first one is anandamide. Anid Sorry, I'm struggling with that word recently. Um, and basically, the way to think of this one is if you've ever experienced like a runner's high, have you ever heard of the runner's high? If you do cardio exercise and you kind of feel really good afterwards, they found that this is actually the endogenous cannabinoid that is creating that effect. So things like eating well, dieting, exercising can actually create, you know, stimulate your endocannabinoid system naturally to make you feel better and get you back into homeostasis. Same thing with 2-AG. This is um, mostly found in the brain, and it's mostly interacting with the CB1 receptor. And basically, you know, it, it, it's the key endocannabinoid involved in retrograde signaling in the brain. But these are basically the cannabinoids that you would find naturally occurring within your body. So, you know, pretty interesting that we have all these things being made within our own body. CBD is actually considered a phytocannabinoid. So that's a very similar structure and interacts with the, you know, very similar to how these two endogenous cannabinoids would interact within your body. So how do phytocannabinoids work? So phytocannabinoids are cannabinoids found naturally in plants. Um, and specifically, cannabis has uh, the highest concentration of them out of any plant that we've discovered so far. Um, basically, it is possible to not be making uh, enough endocannabinoids, and CBD or other cannabinoids can mimic the effect that your endogenous cannabinoids, which is naturally occurring in your body, would have on your body to reduce inflammation, pain, sleep patterns, mood effects, all of those things that keep you in homeostasis. Um, and there's a little too intense, but there's an example as to how, you know, how it reduces the enzymes from breaking down the endogenous cannabinoids and all of these things that CBD can, can do to help. So can you be endocannabinoid deficient? Uh, the theory on this is that you absolutely can. And one of the, the theories also is that it can be one of the leading causes of autoimmune diseases or mysterious illnesses. So if you're experiencing, similar to me, not just one, not just two, not just three, like four or five unusual things going on at once, you might actually be endocannabinoid deficient. Or if you're starting to develop autoimmune diseases, it's theorized by Dr. Ethan Rousseau. He is the leading scientist at GW Pharmaceuticals who um, went forward with the FDA approved Epidolex for seizures as of uh, two or three years ago at this point. Um, so, you know, definitely a lot of science uh, behind this supporting that people are indeed or can be endocannabinoid deficient. Um, fortunately, <laughs> your endocannabinoid system also responds to plant voice, plant based cannabinoids, particularly CBD. Uh, a little bit more on the endocannabinoid receptor types, a little bigger image so you guys can kind of see exactly where these things are. So you can see CB1 receptors are mostly found in the brain, but also throughout the rest of your body. And basically, what are the types of things that these target? They target motor activity, 
cognition, your thinking. They talk. Um, they target your appetite, your memory, uh, immune cells, pain perception. CB2 receptors are much broader than CB1 and influence most of the body. As mentioned, they're, they're found in almost every organ within the body. So you're going to find these within the gut, you know, your kidney function, pancreas, bone, eye, tumors, reproductive system, skin, cardiovascular system, liver. You know, they're literally found everywhere. Uh, there are a few additional receptor types that aren't as well studied at this point, but CB1 and CB2 are kind of the main receptor types that, um, that people talk about with uh, phytocannabinoids. So, you know, you guys have probably heard of THC and you've heard of CBD. So what is the difference on how it interacts with these receptors to cause either an intoxicating effect or a non-intoxicating effect? So I think this is kind of a, hopefully a helpful picture Basically, you can see that the THC, you know, this is a CB1 receptor. It's just a model just to kind of show the concept. Basically, the THC receptor fits perfectly in with the CB1 receptor. And that ends up causing a psychoactive effect, whereas CBD is a agonist of the CB1 receptor. So basically what it does is it doesn't perfectly fit in there, but it still stimulates the CB1 receptor and blocks THC or other cannabinoids from being able to bind with the CB1 receptor. And because it's an agonist, it ends up causing a non-intoxicating effect. Most people will say non-psychoactive. That's actually not true because anytime your mood is improved or changed, that is actually a psychoactive effect. So what is CBD? I know we've gone over this a little bit, but it's also known as cannabidiol. It's over one of over 100 different cannabinoids naturally found in both cannabis and hemp. CBD is extracted from the stems, the leaves, and mostly the flowers of the cannabis plant. Um, unlike THC, as we talked about, it does not produce intoxicating effects. Um, and for this reason, CBD offers um, a lot of the health benefits, or even more in some cases, than uh, THC would without getting people high. Um, so it makes it a great appealing option for patients who are looking for relief from like inflammation, pain, anxiety, uh, spasms, other types of issues, um, seizures, things like that. Like there is already an FDA approved medication from CBD for rare forms of seizures. Um, and I found this and I thought that this was extremely interesting, especially with a lot of the FDA coming out and saying, you know, stay away from CBD and all this stuff, you know, but if you really, you know, if you need additional proof that CBD and other cannabinoids have great medicinal potential, look no further than our own U.S. government's patent on CBD. I'm just going to read this excerpt real quick. The cannabinoids are found to have particular application as neuroprotectants, and this is their words, not mine. Um, for example, in limiting neurological damage following isemic insults, such as stroke, and trauma, or in the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and HIV dementia. Non-psychoactive, again, I think this was before they understood the psychoactive component, non-psychoactive cannabinoids such as cannabidiol are particularly advantageous to use because they avoid toxicity that is encountered with psychoactive cannabinoids at high doses, useful in this method of its present invention. So pretty interesting that I think this was filed back in 2001 by the U.S. government, that they found all of these different benefits and were willing to file a patent and also use these pretty strong words about the potential impact it could have uh, in the world of medicine. Um, so we've talked a little bit about CBD and, you know, THC is one that most people know um, since it was the top cannabinoid that was... Uh, cultivated during prohibition, the black market days. But there is a whole world of cannabinoids out there, and they all have different things that they can help with. So my actually favorite cannabinoid is called CBG. And CBG, the reason I'm so excited about it is that they've run some preclinical studies on it, and they found that it has the ability to decrease GI motility. So I talked to you guys about my GI condition. Um, 
basically GI motility is when your intestinal tract gets stretched out uh, because it's inflamed. And the GI, you know, using something like CBG can put it back together in the right form that it should be, reduce the inflammation, reduce the pain, and get your normal functioning back. So CBG seems to be a cannabinoid that can be really helpful for GI and dietary type issues, um, but it also has a lot of other benefits. It's been shown to reduce anxiety, anxiety at an even greater rate than CBD. Uh, it's been shown to be useful for depression. Obviously inflammation, if it's able to put your GI tract back together uh, the way that it should be. And just recently, actually, there was a study run with CBC and CBG that show that um, these cannabinoids have the ability to fight superbugs like MRSA, which is basically very resistant to any antibiotic that we have in our medical toolkit today. So pretty interesting. CBC is also really interesting. I think some more studies need to be run on it to have a better idea of exactly what it can do. But CBC shows some of the most beneficial um, components for healing brain trauma. So it's right for the NFL with all the CTE issues that they're having and things like that. I think it'd be great for them to kind of run some studies on CBC <coughs> and see if that we can actually get these brain cells that have been destroyed or traumatized, uh, functioning and healing and all that kind of stuff and back to normal. CBN is a very interesting one if you have problems like me uh, for sleeping or insomnia. So it's been shown to have a very sedative type effect um, and it's also been shown to be useful in anxiety as well. So I know that that already sounds like it's too much information along with the CBD that we're gonna talk about today, but we have to talk about another compound that's extremely important. Um, and basically think of these terpenes as, you know, if you think of the cannabinoid as your car, terpenes are the steering wheel. So it's pretty hard to get where you're going without the steering wheel to direct either your mood or effect that you're looking for. So there are over a hundred different terpenes found in cannabis. Do you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah, I'll start it off. <laughs> and um, basically I think this is probably one of our main differentiators as opposed to other CBD products currently on the market. But basically uh, terpenes are aromatic compounds that are very prevalent in cannabis as well as a range of other plants, including fruits, herbs, spices, um, you might be, fam you're probably already familiar with them if you've ever used like essential oil products. They're really what give cannabis and other plants their distinct aromas, smell, and taste. And uh, like Nate said, I think there's been over a hundred or, or more terpenes that have been identified uh, in the cannabis plant. It's a big determining factor between if you've ever experienced different strains or varieties of cannabis. Uh, the terpenes are really important in differentiating those in not only just how they'll smell, taste, and, you know, be consumed, but also in the type of effects that you're going to receive from that given product. So depending on the profile of these specific terpenes in a given product, whether it's CBD or another cannabis product, that will really help dictate what, how it's going to make you feel and how it will treat any given symptoms you might have. Um, yeah, and like one example, just so, um, because I think these terpene compounds sound as like, they sound like something you've never heard of, but you probably have experienced them. So if you've ever used like bath salts or bath bombs, like infused with like lavender, which was supposed to calm you down, and you kind of felt that calming effect after whatever you use with the lavender, that is actually linalool, which is a terpene that we'll talk about. So a lot of the essential oils that you guys might be familiar with, the active compound within that is actually terpenes that's creating the mood type effect that you were looking for. Yeah, and there are, you know, like we said, 100, 100 or more different terpenes, but there are a few specific ones that are most commonly found in the cannabis plant and in a lot of CBD products. Um, we have a few examples of these and a lot of these main ones you can also find in our products. We have done a lot of research and just do a lot of work with formulation to figure out, you know, what specific terpenes should we infuse into these products to give them their certain effects and to help people with specific things like anxiety, like sleep, what have you. Um, 
One example of a terpene, one of the most common ones found in cannabis is alpha pinene. Um, it's found in cannabis as well as things like orange peels, pine needles, basil, parsley, rosemary, confer trees. Uh, we're very interested in alpha pinene uh, because of studies that have uh, shown its antidepressant, anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, one of the nice things about terpenes, since they are so prevalent in other plants, is that they've actually been a lot more studied than cannabis compounds. They haven't had the same schedule one classification. So there's actually been a good amount of research conducted on them. Uh, and there are some really good resources that we use specifically uh, online where you can do your own research. We also have a lot of information on our website, but um, alpha pinene specifically, some of the effects and benefits uh, that have been shown have been uh, memory aids, like we said, anti-inflammatory, uh, even anti-cancer and anti-anxiety. And specifically with strains of cannabis that are maybe high in THC, uh, alpha pinene can actually counteract some of the memory loss associated with THC products. So that's the other cool thing about these compounds is that they can, you know, counteract specific effects that you might be getting from a different cannabis compound, what have you. Um, yeah, I would I'm say- I'm gonna let Nate take the next one. Yeah, and he's really passionate. I wanna like, I know we're throwing a lot of information at you guys, so I wanna try and simplify it and make sure you guys walk away with like one thing about each terpene that um, is important, right? So if you were trying to take like a CBD product and you want to stay extremely focused, energized throughout the day, alpha pinene is one that you want to make sure is in your formula. And you want to make sure it's one of the leading compounds uh, from a terpene perspective. So if you just take that away, um, I think that that is probably good enough for, for today. Um, beta carpaline is, again, my favorite uh, terpene because it has, it's known as a dietary cannabinoid. So again, I talked about my GI condition. Um, it's also found in black pepper, hops. So, you know, there's other plants that this can be found in. Um, again, I think the thing I'd like you guys to take away is that it can help with the GI tract. The one really interesting thing about beta carpaline is that just like CBD, it interacts with the CB2 receptor. So it's the only terpene out there that they found that actually mimics the effects of CBD. So there are actually companies that are starting right now that are trying to create products that are just beta carpaline because it's been shown to interact with the exact same receptor that's, that CBD wow. has. So pretty interesting. Yeah. Want to talk about limonene? Yeah, I'll take limonene because I would say that's probably my favorite terpene. Um, you can find a pretty good amount of it in our uplift drops here. And what I like about it is, you know, it's also found in citrus fruits, mint, it gives a lot of uh, uh, strains of cannabis that are classified as sativa, typically, uh, they're kind of citrusy taste and aroma, but, uh, I really like it because there's been a lot of research conducted to show its anti-anxiety and antidepressant properties, which those are kind of my big two and have been my big two. Um, it can kind of give you like that little bit of mood boost, but also, you know, keep you calm. Um, some other benefits, anti-inflammatory, relaxants. And there was actually a study conducted in Japan uh, on depression where they specifically used just isolated limonene uh, to treat patients with depression. And they found, I think, was it 50% 50%. of participants were able to get off of SSRIs mm -hmm. just by utilizing limonene. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives you an idea of mm -hmm. uh, some of the medicinal power and benefit of uh, these these compounds that are very prevalent in cannabis. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty interesting. Um, Myrcene, if you've ever used THC products, which I have, and maybe some of you guys have, if you ever felt like that couch lock effect, like you're so stuck in your seat type thing, that is because of Myrcene. So Myrcene is also found in mangoes, hops, bay leaves. Uh, but the biggest thing with Myrcene is that a, it's great for pain and inflammation, but on top of that, it's also a sedative. So it can be really helpful for sleep. And if you're looking for sleep uh, improvement type thing, you're gonna want a product that's high in mercine. Um, I'll take the last one too, linalool. So linalool is what we talked about a little earlier. If you ever use like the lavender bath salts we were talking about, linalool is actually the main active ingredient.